Ladies and gentlemen from the Microsoft Theater here in downtown Los Angeles, brought to you by Sean Porter Promotions. I touched the bar under the table and I thought it was a watch your feet. I was like, oh damn, it was Ant's foot. <laughs> but it wasn't. Hey, I think I just heard that. Uh, For the first time? Yeah, that's the first time I caught that. Right that. there? Yeah, he uh, <laughs> Listen, keep paying harmony. attention. You hear something new. Hey, every we ever time. gonna bring him in? We we gonna bring him in. We okay. gonna bring him in. Perform yeah. live? He'll yeah. Okay. Porterway concert series. So let's start there with my guy Ace Boogie. Shout out to Ace Boogie, Akron, Ohio, from Cleveland, Ohio. Um, so he's he's just he's a Northeast Ohio cat. Um, I like his bars. I think that he is. Uh, he's a he's a he's a natural rhymer. Mm-hmm. Uh, and how I got linked with them through my dad, uh, we, my dad said, Hey, you want to, I just met somebody. You want to go to a spoken word joint? I was like, all right, cool. So when I saw him doing this, the finger snapping and all that, it was, it was a smooth groove. You know what I mean? And he just kind of became my guy ever since then. So, um, we got to get him in here. As I tell said, he did some poetry. Maybe he would have, he might've been at that spoken word. Oh yeah. (laughs) (laughs) He could have been in he would have so let's be honest I would have some wicked boxing spoken word poems oh absolutely yeah. I feel like he would have some crazy yeah. stuff we might have to get him to sit down and write something I ain't gonna lie he, he kind of intimidates me cause you don't want to go down that rabbit hole with him cause he'll uh, destroy you you talking about uh, Zytel yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. I, he, I, he different yeah. I, I think me and you were talking about it I would love to watch a fight with him oh sit next to him at a fight cause then I, he'll just at a real fight yeah yeah cause he'll just be dropping like yeah, back in 1996, yeah. this happened. Like, oh, damn, that's crazy. I didn't remember yeah, that. But yeah. shout out to Sean Zaitel. Fight hype. Not here again. That dude was special. Two weeks in a row. Yeah, yeah two weeks in a row. Docking yeah. his pay. Yeah. But, so we're going to get uh, Ace Boogie in here um, relatively soon. I just wanted to get back in here with, with everybody first. Yeah. And um, since we own it, I'm going to, with or without you guys. Perfect. Uh, yeah, we I do like now? the sound of it. We gonna, well, I'm going to drop another... Uh, segment into the Portaway podcast, so we're gonna do a motivational Monday. Okay, probably to start it just once a month. We'll do a motivational Monday, um, to kick off the month and to kick off another um part of what the Portaway is. You know what I mean? Which is motivating, inspiring, teaching. You know all that kind of stuff. Triple so, M. Hey, motivational. We're starting Monday. off motiva- motivation Mondays. It's Monday. We're running late. Hey, don't cry <laughs> to give up. Cry to keep going. Oh, okay. Monthly motivational okay. Monday. Yeah, don't cry to give up. I cry to keep going. I, yeah, oh, I, I, I could do without hey. without both. <laughs> I, oh, I we do use that a both. lot in my house. <laughs> don't do no crying. Yeah. Hey, she knows she gets one cry a year. Use uh, it wisely. Uh. Whether it's happy or sad. <laughs> hey, what? Or just one single cry. Hey, shout out to Kevin Hart. We watched Fatherhood last night. Boom. Way to go there. Way to go there. Good movie, right? Yeah, you seen it? I was yeah, I was gonna oh, okay. go. I was gonna go there. Carson, check it out, man. You gotta check it out. Gotta and check I, it out. hey, I'm not really a Kevin Hart guy. I'm like me and you. He played a different role. Yeah, he went down a different lane. Yeah, I gave him a try. I didn't want to turn it on. I was yeah. forced. Carson. You had to try it though, right? Yeah, yeah. You had to try. Hey, it was official, Sean. Yeah. I mean, Carson. Yeah, I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll, All right, he ain't I'll, gonna do it. Yeah, I'm not gonna do it. <laughs> I'm not going to commit to it and then not do it. Hey, shout out to Kevin Hart. I did actually. So I did two things this weekend. Shout out to Kevin Hart for the movie that he did, Fatherhood. Uh, Walk in and my sister's watching the movie. Mm -hmm. And I I said, hey, uh, I just know movies. So like I walked through, I seen one scene, walked through it again. I seen another scene and I basically like figured out what the movie was about. And she said, yeah, this is first serious role. So I sat Mm -hmm. down and we checked out the movie together. I said, all right, well, boom, this Father's Day weekend. I got I got in my Father's Day, you know, thing, thing, whatever. I said, I should talk about this on the podcast, being that this is right oh, after yeah. Father's Day. Real dad. And, and, and the real dads and all that going on that I had shouted out the previous week. Yeah. I said, you know what? I want to let everybody know that Kevin Hart stepped it up. Yes. It's something a little different. You may not like the range that you've seen from him in the past because it has been kind of like consistent and it's the been, same it's Kevin. Kind of, yeah, it's been because he's been like, you know, you may be Kevin Harded out. You know what I mean? Try this one, especially with it being Father's <laughs> Day weekend, because he gave us something different. Yeah. Even the storyline's a little different yeah. than we're used to as well. So kind of kind of like um what Will Smith did, the uh the the movie that Pursuit he did. Pursuit of Happiness. Yeah, kind of like that in the sense that he's a single father and stuff and, like and that. And it was a comic relief, but it wasn't from him. Yeah. Yeah. He was serious. Yeah. Yeah. He, yeah. he brought it, man. Yeah. Shout out to Kevin Hart. Hey, Kevin yeah. Hart. <laughs> hey, we, we hey, we'll be talking. You right, maybe man. you guys, maybe you guys. I, oh, oh, yeah. yeah, maybe. Right. Hey, sorry, I'm always looking at the monitor. <laughs> maybe you guys sold somebody. I don't know. 
I did, we didn't sell you. Nah, not even slightly. Well, you, you know, you know how you know how I feel. Yeah. He not a, yeah, no. he's, and, he's been very successful hey, in the business. Carson, I, I, can't I told you, I, me and you was here with him. <laughs> yeah. I was forced. You know me. You know my situation. Yeah. I get forced on all type of stuff. Yeah. I was. I said, "Oh, this is." He got one. Yeah. And then the other side of it. So yesterday, being Juneteenth, uh, wifey and I two decided days two days ago. Well, two days ago now. Yeah. yeah. My wifey and I decided to check out um, one night in Miami. That was good. Oh, we watched yeah. that. That was. Good. I saw that. that, that was good. So we watched that, and I was like. Dang, like Regina King did her thug. Well, that's, a, that's a lot of talent yeah. in one room. Yeah, a lot of yeah, talent in one room. Talent room. Was a lot going on. And I and 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 so for me, I'm all about the artistic side of movies and things like that because I figure them out so well. So I kind of need something else to like really get me in the movies. And so when I see that a majority of this movie is taking place in one room, mm-hmm. I said, hold on a second. Da, 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 da. Okay, it used to be a play. That makes sense. Because yeah. this, you could do that on a, on a stage, stage easy, yeah. but you can't normally do that in a movie. On, in a movie. And so mm-hmm. Regina King and everybody else really put that down. So. Yeah, that, that was official, yeah, man. Yeah, 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 yeah. And uh, we're still talking about Juneteenth. Hey, when I was out in Louisiana, I mean, I went, you know, me and Sean had a conversation about going plantation yeah. and just our history, family, I mean, history of black people. I wasn't feeling it. I'm not going to lie. I wasn't, I wasn't, yeah. I didn't want to go. Yeah. I ended up going Oak Valley, no, Whitney Plantation mm-hmm. up in, right outside of New Orleans. Man, it, so when you go there, they give you headphones and someone's literally talking to you the whole time, explaining what's going on. And then actually slaves come on and talk to you. Mm. Hey man, that's official. Mm. That's official. It, take, it, it, it lets you know where mm. you came from. Mm-hmm. It takes you down that road and I said, the day I have kids, you know, I told you, we're going at five years old. Yeah. You're going at 10 years old. <laughs> you're going at 15 years ago. You don't know where you came from. Yeah. But no, that was, that, that's something special. If yeah. I could recommend anything outside of New Orleans, Whitney Plantation. And just to go back to one night in Miami real quick, wifey got really choked up at the end of the movie when um, they threw the bottle in, in uh, Malcolm X's house and, and oh, lit yeah, the house on fire. Yeah. yeah. And I just shook my head. I'm like, wow, like it's just it's really unreal that that used to be a norm yeah. back in the day, you know? Yeah. And I said, man, like it made me happy that we have come some ways from that, yeah. at least. And um we got still, a long way to go. I was gonna say still not far enough. Yeah, we, we got a long yeah. way to go. And and I did an interview early or last week, and they said, Hey, how do you how do you feel that Juneteenth is finally a holiday, so on and so forth? I said, Well, you know what? February has been a month for black history for, for mm-hmm. black people for a long time. I said, but it kind of became a norm. You just kind of went through the whole month of February like it was just another yep. like yeah. it was just another month. I said, with me now understanding what Juneteenth is and them recognizing this as a national holiday in America, I plan to do something with my children every Juneteenth and something leading up to mm-hmm. to help them understand like what a part of their heritage is and where we come from understanding that we still got a long ways to go and they don't stop there. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So I'm, I'm really trying to put my foot on the gas pedal in terms of trying to help my community and where, where everywhere I, my feet touch yeah. become better and more united. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So. You know, I got a grandmother. She's in the nineties. She survived cancer scare two times. Mm-hmm. My grandma's still fighting, but uh, my grandma would tell me when like stuff get hard, you know, God, God would just send her a word. She always told me, why are you crying? Why, why, why are you giving up now? If the slaves would have gave up, we'd have, we'd have died in the middle of passage and yeah. never made it here. Yeah. So yeah. no excuse. And you know, you guys know me, I'm Mr. Positive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So all, my motto is someone always got it worse than us. And yeah. the stuff they went to, through for me to get here. Yeah. Nah. Can't stop. Can't and, and, and a Can't lot stop. of it is. Timeline wise, I think puts in perspective where you'll you'll think of we'll think of things like Martin Luther King is like mm-hmm. a long time ago, and it's like mm-hmm. it really yeah. wasn't that long ago. Yeah. Like a lot of yeah. this stuff, like they were talking yeah. about Rosa Parks. I can't think of the year she passed away, but it like it really wasn't that long ago. Yeah. So it's still like a lot more fresh than I think people realize. Like oh, that was way back in the day. It's like no, nah, it really wasn't that long ago. And then yeah. I, I love the fact that me, you, Carson. A producer, director in the back, we can all be at the same room in the same space. Yeah. I love all races together, man. Yeah. I mean, I understand yeah. it's Juneteenth, but yeah. I love everybody, man. Yeah. I just love everybody being able to love each other. Yeah. yeah. I, I actually, last week, I wanted to make it very apparent and clear that Real Dad's Network is not just about black fathers. Mm-hmm. I asked the question, I said, hey, is this. Just a, is this a thing for just black dads? And he said, well, no, it's not exclusive to black dads, but we do focus 
on black fatherhood and and pushing you know black fathers in, in the positive direction. I said, all right, cool, because I got a lot of Mexican fans. Yeah. I got a lot of white yeah. friends. Yeah. I got a lot yeah. of uh, friends around the world, yeah. fans and friends around the world, and I got to be able to tell them all this. I said, but I can't do that in, 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 in the back of my mind, knowing that this is just something yeah. for black people. They said, no, it's not. I said, all right, cool. And then, then I got you 100%. And it even, even we can kind of get to boxing with this tie-in. We mentioned before, like, women's boxing, you mentioned, you know, I'm not getting on the hype train just to get on the hype train, but women's boxing was something that was neglected for years. Mm -hmm. And even if black fatherhood is highlighted specifically, yeah. but it's not the only thing, yeah. black fatherhood, yeah. just black people in general, it's yeah. been marginalized for years. So even mm -hmm. if you are going to highlight that specifically, mm -hmm. like tough shit, it's been, it's been <laughs> marginalized for a while. Yeah. So yeah. we give it the center stage, yeah. you know, now, but um, speaking of Juneteenth, busy day of boxing, man, a little less busy. Hopefully Tiafimo Lopez is doing, yeah. uh, doing better. Nah, forget to feel female. Hopefully, got, Chavez Junior is doing better. Oh my god, <laughs> my man got taxed. <laughs> yeah, that's that. That is that's unbelievable. That he, I mean, he didn't really get taxed though. Okay. But he, yeah, <laughs> that's I get it's the principal, but you know, yeah, that's that's just unfortunate I, hey, for him. Not I mean, in general. I don't know if we said this on the podcast. We brought up that Sean immediately said, "Let's bet that." <laughs> hey, but we tried to bet oh, it, spider. and once do miss weight, they shut it down. But. Who said let's bet that? The others I tell. I said let's bet that. On the spider? I, that, that's just that's one of those things where <laughs> No comment. Uh, yeah, well, I mean that's just one of those things where and we I assure you we're not gonna harp on this fight, but <laughs> like I mean you, you just you get opportunities consistently and, and you I mean that's gonna happen in boxing that's and the, sports. That's the bad part about it. But it, but it, there are times where it's like, okay, you know, should this guy not not even Chavez Jr., but should this guy be getting an opportunity? You know, you know who his dad is, whatever. We watch Rick, you and I both talk about Ricky Hatton's son. Cam. Oh, yeah, yeah. Like, was he going to be on that card if he wasn't Ricky Hatton's son? Probably not, but uh -huh. he stepped up. Uh -huh. that as well. uh -huh. Like, Chavez Jr., you can't keep getting these opportunities, Man. missing weight, and then losing to a MMA fighter in a boxing match. Yeah. I mean, yeah, just just embarrassing. Hey, Pops had to come out of retirement, out the grave, to get on the card for you to get on the card. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's, he's, I, I just don't, I don't. Damn, I don't want to see Damn. him. I just, I just don't want to see him anymore. I hit yeah. up Chris Algieri today. I said, Shout out to Chris Algieri. That's my very guy. underrated hey, commentator. Hey, did well. it? Yeah. Hey, yeah. did they let him out the bag yet? Oh, uh, the they cage. let him out the cage out yet? The cage. <laughs> oh, how, don't do how, that thing. How, how often do you think he hears that? <laughs> He's got to be so mad because he probably hears that all the time. I don't think he does, man. That, like if somebody, if I you, think that goes over most people's nah, head. No, nah, after that. If you nah. walk up to a boxing fan right now and you say Chris Algieri, that's going to be the first thing they say. <laughs> no. Nah, oh, 100%. Guaranteed. No, he, hey, man. Nah, he said, you talking about that white boy that got in the ring nah, wall? No, they're going to say he got <laughs> knocked like, out like seven times in that fight. And, and it was yeah. waiting. But go ahead with your story. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Reach out I hit him up. I said, because that, that really is my guy. Yeah, yeah. And I think you're right. He is an underrated, underrated. commentator. Yeah. Uh, I said, yo, I just watched the highlights of Chavez Jr. and Silva, and you were the best part of the highlights, yeah. man. So, so thank you. He said, man, I was just doing the best I could. I said, man, a couple times I was listening to you. I was like, oh, come yeah. on. All right, Chris, I know what you're doing. Yeah, he, and, you yeah. know, he, he said, hey, I had to do what I had to yeah. do. I said, yo, you're right. And yeah, so, that, so that, yeah, that was the best part of that whole thing. Yeah, so. that, put, that in, put that in the dirt. Um, and, and we can't, and Silva, I mean, to his credit, being an older, older gentleman, he Went in there and you yeah, know credit credit showed him. himself solid. Was, he was talking some trash yeah. to him yeah. during the fight. Yeah, yeah, that's that's bad. But first fight. So the first thing I think we have to talk about Gabriel Rosado. Oh man, that was one. Oh. That was a wicked knockout. Yeah. yeah, and he was he was losing. Yeah, because he got dropped. He right? got dropped yeah. in the first round. Gabe Rosado. What the hell are you looking at? I was thinking uh, that was, was a thinking. typical J. Uh, Gabe yeah, Rosado I fight. I do. <laughs> yeah, you're looking at the distance. It was dramatic. <laughs> Yeah, I swear to God, dramatic. my eyes were like. <laughs> yeah, it was dramatic. A typical was too dramatic. Was, yeah, yeah a typical Gabe Rosado fight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was. <laughs> yeah, he was. He gets dropped. He's losing, and then he gets in that corner. And man, you talk about putting somebody to sleep. He hit that dude. That dude we talked about. He yeah. went two live crew, face yeah. down, ass yeah. up, yeah. kicked his feet up in the air. I got one question for him, and so basically, for which one, Gabe Rosado Gabe, or the, other, or no, the bully? No, do it no, on the ground. No, yeah. No. Did you down, calculate man. that 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 punch was going to be there? Yeah. The guy every time he threw his punches, he he was opening up every yeah. time he threw his punches, and his hands were dropping, and it it was the perfect punch. Yeah, and that just was like timing. I was like, did you just happen to step back and throw that and throw an overhand at that point? 
you know, just wanting Damn, to. You should have had him get, on the show. I know, I know, hey, I know. Hey, <laughs> hey, this guy misses out on so many opportunities. I know, I know, I know. This will be perfect timing. I think uh-huh. he, he, nah, let it yeah, go. He, he laid him out. So, yeah. yeah. G- great punch. Yeah. I was so happy for dude. Yeah. I don't think. He's had some gay. tough breaks. Yeah. yeah. I don't yeah. think he's reinvented himself. But I think he has definitely earned another payday, yeah, and that was that was kind another of another big a, fight. Yeah, part of the part of the narrative of that was like, hey, Gabe Rosado, now he can. I'm like, okay, let's. Hey, and I'm a big little. fan, Carson. Yeah, but like, I mean, let's talk about it. He was lose. He got dropped in the first round and was losing the. Nobody second. talking about that. You did go down third round, but like, took puts an him eight out, count. So. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. But he puts yeah, him out. But yeah, yeah I, I I agree about like a payday. Put him in there with somebody. Another guy they mentioned he might get in with Jaime Munguia, mm-hmm. who got the oh. win in the main mm-hmm. event. I, I was gonna, I was gonna send him to Demetrius Andrade, let him get text. I, I don't mind that fight either. You Gabe, send anybody boo boo at this. Yeah, point. Gabe Rosado, he's he's, um, he's a tough dude. I, I we talked about it last year, but damn, he was he was close to beating DJ. Yeah. Um, in one of the worst fights of 2020. What's up with DJ? <laughs> That's a good question too. Okay. They mentioned Joe Smith, maybe a, a uni- uh, mm, title oh, fight okay. for him, but mm. um. Yeah, I, I think I I don't mind Mungia and Rosado. Rosado would have to go back to one sixty, mm-hmm. but um, Mungia looked good. He, he got got the guy out of there. Yeah, um, that was a solid solid yeah, fight for him. He's yeah. he's good. He takes a little more punishment than I think I'd like to see against yeah. a guy like that. I'm like, oh, yeah, he probably could have dodged that. He got hit with some trailing shots, some yeah. shots that just weren't supposed he's, to land. He's gonna be fun. Yeah, I think he yeah. may edge Gabe. He might get a Gabe. Oh, he there. I I think he stops Gabe. He's yeah. a powerful Fair. dude. Yeah. Yeah. Powerful little little uh young kid. Yeah, but yeah. he he's a strong dude. But yeah, he he gets the win and then um where are we gonna go? I'm gonna let you pick <laughs> Showtime ESPN. <laughs> let's go with uh let's go with Showtime. Of course. <laughs> but yeah, that was uh you got the 122 pounders. Yeah, Alameda and Leo. Yeah. That was we talk about fights on here that Damn. I'm okay with any of the results. That was yeah. a toss up. Yeah, yeah, it was literally we, we the fight was over and we we're watching it while playing some Monopoly and I was like, if Alameda wins, I'm not mad. If Leo wins, I'm not mad. Yeah. If it's a draw, I'm yeah. not mad. Yeah. And the cards, I think I think one was a little funky, but yeah. Um I, I don't have any issues. That with was Angela what made the, the, yeah, the decision. Made a little, little, little wrong. Yeah, a little it was weird. Like 87, 82, something crazy. Yeah, there was one that was just kinda out there, but um yeah, no, I thought that was a good it was a good action packed fight. They mm-hmm. they almost looked like like the Spider Man meme where they're pointing at each other, like it was very like <laughs> they're the same type of fighter. You hit, hit a couple shots, yeah. I'll hit a couple shots, and yeah, yeah very similar fighters. Yeah. Um, Isak Cruz beats Vargas in the in the co main. Mm-hmm. Isak Cruz still built like a brick brick <laughs> shit house. <laughs> hey, hey, our boy was back for that one. Watch your feet. Oh, was he? Was that fight? Am I getting? Uh, that was a lot of boxing. Uh, that was, yeah, was a lot of boxing. Yeah, I think, yeah. I think he was at the top rank. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, Isak Cruz, he, <laughs> yeah, he gets was... he gets him out of there. Vargas, typically a game fighter, but yeah. older now. Yeah. Kind of yeah. went how it went. Yeah. But um, main event was entertaining as hell. Damn, yeah. man. I did not see that coming. I don't that <laughs> Montiel is an interesting looking fighter, man. Interesting. Ugh. Yeah. Bro, I've never seen Charlo look like that. Like what? Did you, what? You were so I'm curious because we watched it together. Man. What did you think? <laughs> I feel like you feel differently than two of us feel based on this. Uh I felt like he took he that he should have got that guy out of there. That went way that should not have gone to this. Are you on social media? No. A lot. Oh like no. Watching no, no. The, yeah. No, no you ain't. I don't care what people. Okay. I, you know, talking about what you talked about? Because somebody somebody posted that they saw two different tweets and they were drastically different on the fight. All right, yeah. That, okay, I watched it my, by myself. Yeah. I felt like he should have got the guy out of there. Yeah, I just thought that guy had a granite-ass chin. Yeah, he took shots. And was extremely awkward. And then I felt oh, like wow. Charlo was wearing down. You think so? Yes. I, don't, I, don't I felt know. like anybody else, Triple G might got him out of there. Charlo took some shots. He definitely took some shots. Took some shots. And, but, and, the guy, and Montiel went to his body, too, like consistently. I think yeah. when he did hit him, it was to the body more than anything until... Yeah. A little bit later on in the so, fight. What do you guys feel? I thought I thought Charlo looked, looked good. Um, I thought that guy was was tough. I mean, tough just mm-hmm. to knock out clearly. But we we talked about like him switching stances, and he would just like he would be southpaw, and then would literally just like step the other way. It wasn't like a, a lot of times you see a guy like actually like shift. this dude was a classic 
uh, Street Fighter. Yeah. You know, like you, and you've seen Street Fights yeah. before. What you do? You take off, everybody <laughs> take off their shirt. Yeah. Then they pull their pants up and then they square up. That was him? And for whatever reason, they always seem to step back, reset, and then switch to the other side. This dude, the whole fight, touching his, his shorts, almost <laughs> like he's pulling them up. Yeah. He's switching both sides. The whole fight, I'm like. There were even times where he was square. Like he would, and there he were times would, when he would he end up square. like kind of square to him, yeah. and then would be like, "Where am I going? Which yeah. way did he go? Which yeah. way did he go?" And then, if anything, for me, when it comes to Charlo, first of all, let me say I was impressed with Charlo. I thought that he did the dang thing. Okay. I understand when you're in the ring with somebody, you looking, and it's like, "What am I looking at? Yeah. What am what what when is you when are you coming? Tall, Can tall, I go now? Tall, you know what I mean? Kind of gangly, yeah, guy well. all of that. So I I understand all that, but let's skip all that. Maybe. Add in feigning this guy to make him move or yeah. show his hand what he's gonna do. But outside of that, I thought that he, I thought that Charlo fought very intelligently. I thought that he worked behind his jab. I thought that I think that that moment where he got dude hurt in the fifth round, he went for it. Once he recognized like this dude ain't going nowhere, let me pull back, and and he and he worked accordingly. His, I thought he worked accordingly thought, for twelve rounds. I thought Montiel his movement sometimes even made it look like he was hurt when he wasn't. Yeah, he was yeah. Like, well, he was like so like yeah, but like, that was his thing. Yeah, he, yeah. he looks like yeah. he looks like Gumby. I think it got to the point where he realized uh, Charlo, I hit him with my best shots. He ain't going nowhere. I'm at the box this guy. Montiel, you say? Yeah, yeah. You're, Charlo, you're saying that Charlo uh, wasn't hit, gonna be able to get him out. Yeah, of he realized. Charlo, yeah, he realized. Yeah, I'm yeah. not getting him out of here. Yeah, and it's a, and it's a part of the, the learning learning curve. You know what I mean? We're never done learning. I think if anything, Charlo might look back at the fight and see moments where he might have been thinking something and didn't do it, yeah. and might might when he watches back, he says, "Well, if I did try it, maybe the outcome may have been a little different." So on and so forth. But I th- I thought that. First of all, Montiel was very awkward. It made the fight very entertaining, and uh, and and it gave us more to watch. Yeah. You know what I mean? Uh, it gave us it. I I was surprised all the way around. Yeah, I, I was suspected. I was no, surprised. I, I was how, not expecting it. At yeah, all. I was surprised at how uh, poised uh, Charlo seemed to be. People were talking about his conditioning and things like that. When you banging on the dude, yeah. Other people, y'all don't y'all don't understand this. When you banging on the dude round after round. Ain't mentally, you get a little, you get a little fatigued mentally. Like, yeah. all right, I'm, I'm, it's you like know, hitting a heavy bag. Yeah, for twelve rounds. Yeah, so you're just taking it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So if anything, you put somebody in better in front of Charlo that the other night, and you might even saw a better Charlo. Great yeah. fight. That was that was an entertaining. It was fight. a really yeah. good fight. Really, yeah, entertaining. that was the fight. I, out of all the boxing, I thought it was the fight. Well. We'll get to him. Excuse me. Yeah, we'll get but, to him. But you know, I, I just mean like in terms of how com- yep. how entertaining it was, it was, like round by round, I was yeah. like, all right, what's going to happen yeah. this and, round? And, you know, and we, and we talked about. I don't think like Montiel maybe won a round. Like, yeah, maybe a round. Ah, I, get, I was like, I was like, oh, I could probably give him that one. Yeah, if, you were, if you were looking, yeah. like, can I give him trying one? to find him one? You yeah. probably could have, yeah. but um, yeah, I mean, Charlo blows him out. As far as what's next for Charlo, I don't. I guess maybe Ant and I feel differently. I didn't watch that yesterday and th- or uh, Saturday and think, yeah, you know, I think he, Triple G could beat him. I actually think he beats Triple G pretty handily. I don't think I Triple think G's is not he, Triple G's foot. He foot still got them now. hammers. Oh, he, he always. That's what I'm ha- talking about. And, and he's got a chin, but I think his footwork has gone down. I think he's limited now. And so I think and Charlo's I think athleticism. I think he's going to be flat foot and trying to knock him out. He's, yeah, that's I, don't think, I don't think he, I don't think he yeah. would be able to. I think I think Charlo is quick enough on his angles and whatnot to to get him. But I even saw that the other night. Yeah. Like he hit some pivots and some angles. I said, all right. I just thought I felt like he was he was fighting very intelligently. He was thinking in the ring. Almost started some shit. He, he, he start it. Start it. No, 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 no. <laughs> I, I thought he looked good, no, man. Yeah. I thought no, he looked no, very no, good. He looked good. Nah, we ain't gonna do it. I would like to. Let's go. I, would, I think that's the fight I would like to see the most would be Triple G. Um, the one that was was kind of weird, and it was another social media thing. Jose, or, uh, David Benavidez saying I would I would knock this dude out about Charlo. Talking about Charlo, yeah, I was like, I, I'm there for weight that. class above I'm, him. Like I, I don't that. know. Like I think that's a really good. David fight. ain't gonna make one sixty. Yeah, and I, I think David, I, and, and you're and my Charlo guy. Is, and and Jamal has mentioned he's not going up to sixty eight anytime soon. Mm. So I wonder if he would go up for that fight. I don't know, but it, I don't, that just seemed weird to me. I would like that fight. I think it would be an extremely entertaining fight, and it's, mm-hmm. a, it's a really close fight. Mm-hmm. But I was that's like you looking at somebody at 40, and you'd be like, yeah, I kicked this dude's ass. I was like, right wow. amount of money. Like, right amount of money. Yeah, maybe. And, and it would be another. I think I think Charlo now, I think he's looking to 
A, he's looking to unify. Yeah. He's mentioned. Yeah. So maybe he gets boo boo. I know there's some there's a back and forth there. We that's the one I want to see the most. Triple I know. G, Triple G's fighting um Murata towards the end of the year, who's a guy that's kind of up there, 160, but I don't think he has a belt. Um I, tri- Charlo and Demetrius Andre just makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Like for everyone. Hey, why don't you tell Al and uh oh, sh- H. <laughs> <laughs> What, am I going to tell him? I don't, I, don't yeah, what, yeah. I don't have a direct line of communication. Damn, it's a beautiful day outside today. Yeah. So let's talk about... Uh, <laughs> who, so who? So if you could pick one guy for for Charlo to fight, is it is it Boo Boo or Triple G? I like all, all three of those names, but I think out of the two, I think Boo Boo for the... For the opportunity, yeah, uh, kind of that's kind of a put up or shut up fight for Boo Boo, yeah, for sure. Um, and and a and a put up or shut up fight for Boo Boo fans, yeah. <laughs> so I raise my this hand. Time you've been yeah. like, yo, fight, kind of like you yeah. know, like I've been backing you all this time, and it's yeah. like you know, you finally get the opportunity to show your hand against the elite. Yeah. Um, the other side of me really likes Triple G because I think that now's the best time to get Triple G. Yeah. Um. He's been in the ring a couple of times with Canelo. I think that he's 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 left some pieces in the ring against Canelo, and I think that uh, I think that this is a, that that's a fight that I would actually lean with Jamal Jamal Charlo winning. Uh, on the other side, I think that Benavidez. I think that fight is very entertaining. Anybody saying you know you talking about sixty eight against one sixty. We don't know how much Charlo's cutting it to get the one sixty. Yeah. We don't know how comfortable he would feel in terms of you got eight week two month camp and you get to train basically where you live at yeah it, it, people don't really understand that sometimes it's better for you to train and fight where you live at opposed yeah. to cutting down seven eight ten hard pounds you know so i don't know what that is but i like that fight as well if i had to pick one i would i would probably lean towards triple g what, what about our guy we just talked about dj throw dj in there oh yeah i think that's, that's the, the most one see but here's though. the thing and, and the other side of that too is like he didn't really show as much in his last fight. Yeah. I know, but you got to step up. Yeah, and I know. I know. Sean still still got bitter taste in his mouth about the Canelo fight with DJ. Oh me? <laughs> I thought you were going to say his fights with DJ. When he said that, I was like, I was like, man, that's done and that's yeah, right. I was, no, that's Carson. Yeah. Yeah. Always. No, um, I, I think that'll be a good fight. Yeah. But you yeah. just you, you, the, the, the last fight left a sour taste. It, well, because I feel like he's too hesitant, DJ. And you, I need to see you in the ring again. Let me see that you're not hesitant. Let me see the skill. Let me see the speed. Yeah. Let me see like DJ. Let me see Daniel Jacobs. Yeah, I think what Gabe showed him, who he wasn't prepared for, when Gabe yeah. went back with uh, who's but the I trainer? Like, but I felt like Gabe didn't do anything that complicated. Yeah. At least not complicated enough for you to use a jab, which he yeah. didn't use that, the entire fight. fight. Was, so you yeah. Know. Um, I think I would I would like to see the boo boo fight the most because I think it makes the most sense for boxing boxing fans mm-hmm. Demetrius Andre and Jamal. Mm-hmm. What um, are we four years overdue? Yeah, well, five at years least, overdue at least. And at then least. Uh, I think I think he beats I think Jamal beats Triple G. I mm-hmm. think he's just he's too fast. I think he's just too he's got too much for him I right agree. now. I agree. That Demetrius Andre fight would be really exciting. I think I and you kind of test see see boo boo's chin see how that is. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, I think that I think those fights would all be get ready. Yeah, I think well, those would all be interesting. Oh, but you gotta. I, it's sad because we ready for Boo Boo, but common fans like oh, throw him in there with somebody else. He ain't ready. Yeah, uh, he, obviously nah, Demetrius Andre. It, he's he just, too old, man. He, he's got. <laughs> he's either ready now or he's never. I'm just saying ready. that's what fans feel. That's like, why I said sure. this is a put up or shut up. Yeah, why don't you throw him in there with DJ? Boo Boo, another great fight. That's yeah. what I'm saying. Then John, did, and, y'all, did you know they fought back in the day? They fought it. I mean, you guys all kind Just of fought. Just one time. They only fought one time. It was a round robin. Who won? Who you think won? I got Demetrius Andre. Boo Boo won. Dang, we disrespectful. Yeah, yeah. No, no, I, 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 no, Boo Boo, Keith Thurman talked about it. He, right. They fought four times and Keith only won one time. Yeah. So, yeah. DJ, and then after that, Canelo. I mean, Charlo. Yeah. There's, there's a lot of guys you can kind of Who? make. Uh, Who? For, uh, for Boo Boo? Charlo, Charlo. No, no, no. You said Boo Boo against DJ? And then, and he, then Charlo. And then Charlo. Then the winner of that get Canelo? Oh, nice. Yeah. Oh! Yeah. I wish boxing was that easy. <laughs> yeah. Oh, damn! I yeah. wish boxing yeah, was that easy. Yeah, there's a lot of guys, 160, 168, <laughs> that you can kind of kind of line up. But then damn. to go back to, to finish One up. fight changes it all. This is why you can't yeah. do it. Yeah, for Cause sure. Because, like, yeah. man. Let's say, let's say Plank get the fight. Plank. 
handles his business. That changes everything. Yeah, hundred. Caleb changes the whole yeah. platform of box. Yeah, yeah hundred percent. Caleb Plant changes yeah. the whole platform of box. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. Well, not really because then you, you were looking at an immediate rematch. Oh yeah, yeah. Or are we? Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. We we know that's how an immediate rematch. Yeah, probably. Yeah. But um, should we close up on on the Saturday <laughs> of fights? ESPN. Anyway. Who yeah. else? Who else was on? Um, Mayor, Michaela Mayer got the win. Yeah. Defended the title. Yeah. Uh, you, had, you had Dog Bay and uh, uh, Lopez. Man, that was tough for Dog Bay. <laughs> Those guys, that was kind of going a similar fight to like I, Alameda and Leo. Yeah. Those guys were yeah. like, that's what's, this, we're throwing. I, I, was that tripping? Oh, all you throw is power punch, punches. Dog Bay? Yeah. 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 It's a lot okay. of power. Yeah, it's yeah. a lot yeah. of power. Yeah, they, they yeah. coming. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. You remember yeah. a fight night where you hold, you hold yeah. LLB on the I'm like, my man, you're going to get tired. But he does it all night. Very good in the ring. All right, man, listen. This what you gonna do, then. <laughs> this what you gonna do, you yeah. know. So yeah, no, those, Mayor, that let, was, let his fighters do what they got to do. Yeah, you know? that was an exciting fight. Obviously, like I said, Michaela Mayer defends her title, and then the monster. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that. Hey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You hit, you you yeah. in on it, man? Yeah. Oh yeah, you make guy. you believer. Yeah. Oh yeah, he hit me in my kidney. I'm done. That's right. Yeah. That, Say what? He hit me in my kidney. I'm done. Uh, <laughs> what you thought I said? I thought you said he hit my kid. It's a wrap. Yeah, <laughs> nah, he, he hit my kid. He hit my kid. Yeah. <laughs> ain't got nothing to do with me. Hey, get my kid. That's you and your problem. Yeah. Yeah, that dude is. If there was anyone that was on the fence, hey, bring up his age. Hey, you know my what? man, please. I think he's 20, 28. My man, say boom. He's either, he's either, he's either, he's either twenty eight or twenty nine. My dude got up. Yeah, respect. How, because yeah. I was oh, thinking about sure. you when you got uh, 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 hit by. No, you ain't see it. Oh. You ain't see me get hit by nobody <laughs> <laughs> pointing at me. Yeah, he was uh, yeah, sausage feet. You ain't see it. <laughs> he try. How you gonna try to recall the whole uh, the whole moment? Because you, you based told on the story sto- so. Well. But based on the story I told, you were like, you were like Robert Frost, man. Yeah. You painted the picture. Oh, yeah, I had a whole picture playing in my head. I ain't gonna lie. Yeah. I Ross. was there. Yeah, um, oh. yeah he. Uh, <laughs> Man, those body shots are mm-hmm. something else. And we talked about it. Um, <laughs> he had uh, hot and spicy, man. Those body shots were hot and spicy. But yeah. he had his elbow blocking his liver. Mm-hmm. And he slid it forward like an inch. <laughs> and anyway, it was like, well, take it easy. <laughs> Hold on to this. Take it easy. And Dang. he was out of there. He's 28. I don't, don't want to see I don't want to see the legend back in there with him, man. Donaire? Yeah, man. it's time. I want to see that. You want to see that? I want to see that. So, that, so we can touch on, on so the, so some of the news. I kind of felt the same way about um, we we'll call him the legend. I like that as I felt about Gay Rosado. I just kind of like wrote Gay off. Thought that he was about done. Yeah, the fight last year with with with, with uh, DJ. DJ wasn't all that. But then the other night, I'm like, boom! All right, you you haven't reinvented yourself, but. You got another night, yeah. and I want to see you. I want to see some more of what I just saw, yeah, you yeah. know? So, seems like things with him and Freddie are working out. And then, and then to go back to uh, to the guy, the legend, I just, you know, I kind of wrote him off, thought he was it, he was done. But I see in his eyes, man, he just got this different energy about him. He, it's like he's just kind of rejuvenated, and he's hungry. And that fight was and he, so and he good wants, the first time. He, he wants more than just belts and stuff like that. Like, he wants greatness now. Well, so, now you have, so, so the way it's going to line up, this week we find out Rigondeaux is going to step aside essentially and allow Donaire to fight Casemiro, and that fight is That's all another good one. action. Why don't Rigondeaux fight anyway? I would be I would be fine with that. I, I think the monster gets him out of there in a big way. What do you mean? I think. Yeah, I, I want to be bet nice. my life on. Yeah, <laughs> that's excessive. But the uh, but then I, I'm and then the the thought was that that Rigondeaux would get the winner of Donaire Casemiro. I would prefer the winner of that gets the monster. Me, yeah, me too. I've seen that too. But, uh, man, those fights, all those guys can really rock. Yeah. Obviously, Guillermo, yeah. better days were behind him. Yeah, but, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. yeah that, I think Donaire is is great, but, man, monster is hey, that hey, special. That little round robin, the winner gets this. Hey, at the end of the day, the monster's going to be waiting at the end. It's like the yeah. final level yep. of the get video <laughs> yep. game. He's Good luck there. to your player. Yeah, and and we we've talked about it. When so he fights Donaire, breaks his orbital bone, and we've talked about. I mean, we, you saw Billy Joe Saunders couldn't continue. Mm-hmm. Obviously, there's levels to it. Mm-hmm. Some are probably worse than others. Mm-hmm. I've never broke my orbital bone. Hope I never do. But mm-hmm. in a way, I said he was seeing double mm-hmm. most of the fight against Donaire. Mm-hmm. And still got the win. Mm-hmm. So I mean, if you broke your orbital bone and beat that guy, I'm not sure how <laughs> I'm, I decidedly you beat him again. Shout out to Bob, Bobby. Yeah. Uh, can they? Why don't? Couldn't they push that for a big pay per view? 
They could. Yeah. I feel, I, I mean, obviously we're here for I it. like the fight. I like all an all Filipino matchup with Casemiro and Donaire as well. That's going to be really, really exciting. And, and the biggest fight, I think, I would probably say outside of Pacquiao ever. Well, the be, Philippines. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Donaire yeah, and Casemiro yeah, yeah, against yeah, each yeah, other. Yeah, but, yeah. Um, and that's going to be, I thought, Kat, so when we talked about those fights, I thought Casemiro was going to blow the doors off of Rigondeaux. Mm-hmm. Not going to blow the doors off of Donaire, mm-hmm. but that's going to be a shootout. Um, Donaire's got the age on his side. Yeah. He's got the experience on his side. And Casemiro, he, he has some losses, so it's not like he's, yeah. you know, an undefeated guy. Yeah. But, um, yeah, that, I think that fight is going to be super fun to watch. And then my, match up with the monster. That dude... I mean, top three pound for pound. He's not overrated. No, I, I he's think he's not overrated. I think if anything, he's slightly underrated because of his size. Uh-huh. I think it, not, uh-huh. to, but Ant, I think you just don't like smaller fighters. Yeah, I need to see him move up. Hey, is it possible? <laughs> yeah. You're already pushing him up. You're already pushing yeah. him up another one. Is it possible for him to pull a Pacquiao? Um, no, he's real little. Yeah, he's he's a he's a little guy. Hey, hey, hey. I mean, he's already Please a multi, hey, he's, hey. and he's already already a multi division champ. I, you could maybe see him at twenty two. Hey, this is probably a dream for a reason. I had a dream that Pacquiao was da, 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 on Earl. Ah, uh, that's you gonna say on Sean. I was like, oh no, nah, I wouldn't think you like that. Boy. <laughs> Even if I did, no, nah, for reason he was, mm. da, 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 da. but that was a dream for yeah. a reason because I think Earl, he don't that da, da, da. boom. That's gonna be the hell out of here. But <laughs> yeah, I don't, it's I don't, truth. I don't think the monster the truth. The truth hurts. Um, I don't think, I don't think, in a way, can move up too much. But I can see him at twenty two, <laughs> and there's some good fights there. Yeah. Um, I we just got, don't. I don't think we'll ever see what Pac did. We'll, I don't think we'll ever see that again. Yeah. Um. It's a one of a kind guy. Yeah, man, it's it's possibly Pat could get blown out. It's, a, it's absolutely possible. There to be great. Yeah, but I yeah, just hell, I that'd not? be sad. Mm. I you look at and and they're both obviously from the Philippines, but you can look at kind of the similar Donaire and Pacquiao. Mm-hmm. Neither of them need to fight these guys. Mm-hmm. You don't need to fight Casper, and you damn sure don't need to fight in a way. Mm-hmm. And Pacquiao, you damn sure don't need to fight Errol Spence. Sure. People are going to pay to watch Pacquiao fight anyone. Mm-hmm. He's a big enough star. You're going to pay to watch it. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, they're like, F this. I'm, I'm doing it for the... Yeah, doing, doing for, it for the culture. Yeah, let's try for greatness. But um, yeah, so that's going to be fun. And then next week, another nice nice week of boxing. What we got next week? Oh, we got... Tank got, Davis. Yeah, got the guy. Barrios. Hey. Yeah. And a really nice undercard. Uh, a nice undercard. Let me, let me immediately <laughs> withdraw that. No, that's um, pretty good. We, the co-main is going to be really uh, good. L- I don't L- know L- who's going to win the co-main. Rosario? Erickson, Erickson Lupin and Jason Rosario. Oh, man, that, that punch he took through. First off. off, it's the got knocked out by Jermel Charlo I Derby. They both got knocked out for him. Yeah, so they both. It's at the Derby. Yeah, Erickson <laughs> Lubin worse than Rosario, even though Rosario was a body shot and was a jab to the body. Oh, he went down a couple times before that. Though. Yeah, very yeah. true. Um I don't know where I lean in that fight. I I would think Lubin. I think he's a little yeah. bit more of a skilled boxer than Rosario is. But that's going to be a good fight. That's going to mm. be a lot of action. Because he's trying... His goal is to get Charlo back. Yeah, we've talked about that before. There's some guys where I'm like, yeah, maybe you shouldn't. Like, maybe you shouldn't want to get those guys hey, back. Remember when, uh, remember when uh, the, uh, Adrian Broner knocked that dude out? Uh, uh the kid from DC, yes, I know. Hit him with a hook yeah. in the twelfth round. Manuel, 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 yeah, yeah. Manuel, yeah he wanted him back, but I was the odd same thing. Like, yeah. not nah, AB different. Yeah, that was and and not to harp on that. That was one of the better AB knockouts I've seen because he hit him with like the rumble drill, hit him on the outside, and then just oh. uppercut straight mm-hmm. down the pipe. Mm-hmm. But but yeah, back to this. Yeah, but Lubin, I, I'm not sure if that's something where you. Should, <laughs> I don't know. You could make a lot of money and and get a legacy without trying to get. But, Jamal back, but Carson. That's why I mean you ain't boxing. Well, one thousand. Hey, I ain't gonna lie. If I'm if I'm Louis, Luis Ortiz, just because I'm on heavyweight. Yeah, I ain't I'm, going. I ain't going back to remember Deontay chance. Wilder. Yeah, yeah. You out of your mind. Yeah. He would have threw a jab and I would have went down. I'm like, nah, I'm good. Yeah. But that's why I mean Carson ain't boxing. This is very true. Um, Sean's yeah. like, f it, let's run it back. Well, cause, yeah, because yeah, it's just like any other. Yeah, there's a reason that the NBA has seven games in the finals because. As soon as the losing team loses, it's like I got to get back to the next night, yeah. you know. So, but you also thing. don't get knocked clean out in the NBA. No, I'm just Unless saying, if Rudy Tomjanovich back in the I'm day, just mean like in terms of you know, yeah. Uh, same I, thing. How, like, where do you lean in that fight? Rosario I, I and, lean and Lubin. towards Lubin, um, and I'll tell you why. I think that Lubin, I think that Lubin will be more prepared for this fight than yeah. than, than Jason Rosario. Um, 
seeing both of their camps and knowing their knowing their camps, respective camps, I trust Lubin's camp a little more. I hope that in the press conference they talk trash to each other about getting stopped by Charlo. They're not going to talk trash. He, can, he doesn't speak that. English. You can still translate, but I hope he's like, hey, man, you got stopped in the first <laughs> round. He's like, nah, man, you got stopped with the jab of your body. <laughs> and it's just like, oh, that's crazy. But uh, main event, you've said on record before you don't think anyone at 30, 35, or 40 can beat Javante Tank Davis. Did I include 40? Yeah. I included 40? You said 40. Okay. This dude's undefeated. Yeah, Barrios. What does that mean? mean? I feel like that's. He Barrios to me, we've mentioned before, like guys like Tank, um, they just have he has like flavors, not the word I'm looking for, but he's got a little he's got a little funk to his game. Mm -hmm. Like Barrios to me is a very fundamental fighter, but I don't think he has like maybe athleticism might be the word I'm looking for, but like I think he's just a very A B fighter. Mm -hmm. And I think Tank has a lot of weapons in the yeah. in the in the arsenal, yeah. but um, it's going to be a good fight. And this is this is going to test really your power was working down there. Mm -hmm. Let's see how your power works against a comfortably bigger guy. It's work. And I'm pretty sure I saw a stat that Barrios has in every fight at 140 has either knocked them out or knocked them down. Mm. So also something to think about. Mm -hmm. But um, and he fought Cowboy Carl last year on an undercard of one of the I fights we watched. Fight. But yeah. He's just good. I, yeah. I think he's really good. Yeah, he's good. Um, and he's that's good. for one of the silly WBA titles. WBA. <laughs> Come on, get your life together. There's a lot of suit. Like if if I'm looking at the uh -oh. if I'm looking at uh -oh. a title, there shouldn't uh -oh. be six words in a title. Like <laughs> the WBA, it's like the WBA super regular light uh, recess. <laughs> uh, I'm like, what continental? What the hell? But um, yeah, I think. Uh, I think Tank wins. I think he gets a stoppage. Tank wins. Uh, <clears throat> Middle rounds, six, seven, know, or eight. Man, I hate, I hate calling fights, but yeah. I, 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 to your point, he yeah. was the call in one of your fights. Barrios was. Yeah, I'm trying to think. I seen him, and I wasn't not impressed. What fight was, was it? That? The Danny? No, he didn't fight. I'm trying to think. I seen him somewhere live. Maybe it was just yeah, well, I don't know. somewhere else. Yeah, I'm not sure which one it would have been. Yeah, I know we saw him. Did he fight on Tank? We seen him car? live. Somewhere. I didn't see him live. I saw him oh. on TV. Was that a was that Tank's undercard against Leo know. that we saw him fight like not yeah, that long ago? I think so. I think it was um, against Carl. But yeah, I think man, he's tanks. he fought on he fought on Spence Porter undercard. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, and it, it was rough. Yeah, I said it like I didn't like I wasn't. The yeah, one yeah, that yeah, yeah, yeah. The fact yeah. you said Spence Porter is yeah. like yeah, yeah, like, yeah. You yeah, didn't yeah, say yeah. me and Errol. Listen, they give me things to <laughs> read and I read them. He's like, yeah, <laughs> Sean Porter, Errol Spence Jr. undercard. Um, yeah. So what do you think? What, uh, how does Tank beat him? Yeah. Again, to your point. Um, I, this is exactly what I would call it. Flavor, the flavor is just the the, the athleticism uh, combined with the power and the speed and the agility, the quickness. Coach in his corner, you got and, and shout out to and, Calvin for and and his experience alone. I just think that when you put it all together, it's like it's this this flavor that is very hard to to beat. Yeah. It's like. You may be bigger than him, but are you stronger than him? Okay, you're stronger, but are you faster? Can you catch him? You know what I mean? Like yeah. he's gonna—I—I I, I got a feeling he's gonna end up beating Barrios to the punch. I got a feeling he's gonna—we're gonna see the power that we saw at 130. We'll—we'll we'll see that power, and um, I think that's just kind of that's. So that's where I look at when I see Tank. I see a very a athletic. Yeah, I see yeah. a very athletic Tank. Is there a yeah. better nickname? Like yeah. that makes most sense. Like he is a tank. I just found out, uh, and I got I got to get this guy's name. But uh, <laughs> somebody from his camp nickname is Truck. Have you heard of Truck? No. I gotta no. I gotta I gotta get I gotta get on Truck. So real quick, favorite sports nickname of all time. Go. Uh, hey, I know his Slim Reaper. Now that's a really good one, and I'm mad, <laughs> KD. You did great, but that really should have been his nickname. He didn't. <laughs> He also said he didn't embrace it, but now he's starting to a little bit. Uh -huh. My favorite of all time is a baseball player. Fred McGriff, his nickname was the Crime Dog. I'm not sure if this is right. Jumbo Mutombo. Did he go by that? I don't think so. No. What was yours? You have one off top? Uh, we don't no, need to I'm harp gonna, on that. Gonna, 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 okay, I'm fair enough. Show Tom Shopper. Yeah, boo. <laughs> um, <laughs> the, uh, yeah, I think Barrios might. He's Obviously, he's the, he's, he's the bigger guy. But Jumbo Mutombo. I think he just has... There, there's a difference, and you can speak to this a little bit. There's guys that have oh, heavy hey, punches. Sorry, good. White chocolate. Ah, uh, Jason Williams, that was my guy. <laughs> he one, was clean. If you want to watch one highlight tape, 
Like you want to just throw some yeah. highlights on? Yeah. Those are unbelievable. Hey, that's saucy white. Chocolate. And he was out there throwing the yeah. Vlade Divots and yeah. Weber. Yeah, Corliss Williamson. Yeah, um, he, he big, that. that was Corliss Williamson. I think. Oh yeah, one hundred percent. I think Corliss Williamson was big nasty. That's another good one. Uh, J, what about JYD? Jerome Williams. You were at the ping pong tournament with him. Junkyard Dog. Oh, oh Junkyard Dog. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. yeah but but I think wild. as far as punching power, I think Barrios is the bigger guy. I think he has more. I think his punches might be heavier consistently, mm-hmm. but I don't think he has that like snap power like Tank does. Mm-hmm. Like I don't, I don't, I don't see him like hitting Tank with a huge shot and Tank gets wobbled and gets dropped. Yeah. Like I think his shots are going to be heavy enough where Tank feels them and yeah. doesn't just walk them down. Yeah. But I think Tank, like he hits you with a big shot. It's not. Oh man, that was crazy. I, you're. Yeah. Leo Santa Cruz. Yeah, yeah. I think he's got thump and snap. Yeah. On, yeah. On the, the only shot. thing you guys know, the only thing I have a question about Tank, what's the condition? He proved yeah. it to me last. Yeah. Fight. He put the mirror muffs on. He's coming. Yeah. <laughs> I, uh, Mario's. I don't know. I don't know what he can do. Yeah. Uh, hopefully, you just hope you get him stuck on the end of a jab. Where, you so, got to hope you hit him with something that he respects. Yeah. And I, I play the devil's advocate here. He has a great jab. He's yeah. got really good boxing ability. He's yeah. a good boxer. Yeah. I just, you know, when you... You got to be on every freaking yeah. second. It yeah. don't take us a second. And so I, I love that you said that because that's kind of like where my, where my mindset is in terms of how I'm... Saying that Tank is more than likely gonna win this fight because yeah. I know that you got to be on every second, and Tank's just that guy. Like when you when you off, it's like he smells it, he sees I'm, it, and he finds those moments. You talk about Tank is in a similar, not to that extreme, but he's in a similar Deontay Wilder category. Like if you are off for a second in your defense, yeah. Deontay has you laid out. Yeah, yeah. Tank, you saw Leo Santa Cruz. He threw some of those shots, and Tank was like. You could throw these, but <laughs> you throw one too many, yeah. and it was and it was hand down, man yeah. down. Yeah. But so it's gonna be a really all right. Good so fight. what round you get knocked out? It's gonna be I competitive. Got, I got six, seven, or eight somewhere in that range. Uh, you can't, you can't pick seven. One. I'm going go nu- lucky number seven. I'm going to repeat six. Okay, what do you got? There you go. It's gonna be a good fight. Uh, you, yeah. This That's guy, fair. this boy right and, here. And then, <laughs> why do I have to pick? Yeah. I just I don't get it. I don't that know why. that should be a fun one though. <laughs> uh, and also J Rock fights uh, Mendoza, I think on the on the. Oh, okay. Undercard. Yeah. Hopefully just a nice Another showcase. Mendoza guy. Yeah. He's Hope. tough. Yeah. He's tough. You remember Brian him? Mendoza? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he's tough. Oh, this is this week? Yeah. Yeah. I was going to go on vacation. Where are you going now? Don't worry about it. All right. All right. But... <laughs> um, yeah, so, and then the other, and then the other network, we have, uh, we have uh, another. Uh, 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 uh. Uh, you uh, can't uh, even. Uh, uh, um, we all, what did I say? I said I read what they give me to read. That's fine. I, but I almost hey, listen. I almost read the whole thing. I almost said. Shh. <laughs> hey, 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 shout out to our, our producer director. Hey, yeah. man. Um, I read <laughs> what you put on the screen. Uh, I'm going to say it one more time because I know you got But I was going to read. <laughs> I swear to God, I was going to read all of that. Oh, you're unbelievable. <laughs> oh, my God. Adjust on, adjust on the fly. Uh, but, come um, on, man. You, I feel you, like you a national Guess what it is in the analyst. comments. Um, <laughs> yeah. But another to my, as you know, one of my biggest complaints about boxing, Uh-oh. multi-fight cards, same night. You know what's what happening again. Got? What happened? Top rank. Gentleman doing? by the name of Vasily Lomachenko. Oh, oh Lomo's damn. back in action. Come back. Damn, I'm gonna have to cancel my trip. Nakatani. Good, good fight. That's a really good fight. Mm-hmm. Yes, it is. I'm trying mm-hmm. to figure out nah. mm-hmm. Oh, he's a greenish. So I don't know. I great fight to show us where Lomachenko is yeah. now. Great fight. I'll say for the record, I didn't buy the injury stuff with Lomachenko and the TFMO fight. No, you, you lost. And I'm a huge fan, as you know. Mm-hmm. But I didn't buy it. Mm-hmm. Just stay that for the record. Mm-hmm. Um, I watched, they did, um, Top Rank did like a little documentary thing with him. And he was saying that early in the fight, I think he threw a right hand and said he just like kind of was done beyond that. Um, an interesting factor. We talk about judging on here. So that fight, there were some close scorecards. Mm-hmm. And then Julie Letterman had it like 119, 109. That was ridiculous. And what was interesting was, and I think it was, I think it was Lomachenko's manager was saying that before the fight, they said we don't want any judges from New York or California. Mm. Drew Letterman from New York. New York. Mm-hmm. And so he said she was that they their thought within their camp is that she was like, okay, mm. you don't want a New York judge, you got one. Mm-hmm. Here, hold on to this one nineteen one oh nine. But um, yeah, I didn't buy didn't buy the the injury, but I would like to see. He came on late. Like, what yeah, are you talking I just want to see where he's at because he is a, he is a slow starter, but that was. Absurdly slow. 
Yeah. But that was yeah. embarrassingly yeah. slow. He was waiting. Shout out to Chris Algieri. He was waiting to let it out the cage. Yeah, and, yeah, and he, and honestly, if you look at it, I mean, he brought it. He brought it out the cage, and I felt so stupid because like we're watching the fight. I'm like, obviously, I'm a huge Lomachenko fan. I didn't really, I wasn't rooting against the female, but I, I just like watching Lomachenko do his do his work. I was like. The hell is going on here? <laughs> like, I'm, I'm telling my cousin, I'm like, oh, you're gonna turn it on, and uh, I'm like, next round, well, uh, turn it yeah, on. Yeah, I think uh, we thought like he was thought wait a little TFMO bit, will, will yeah. burn out. No, nah, he came to fight. Yeah, yeah but he. Uh, so I think we'll see where Lomachenko. He could have taken an easier fight, and his logic has been Nakatani struggle or made Tiafimo struggle. Like that was a really tough fight for mm-hmm, Tiafimo. Mm-hmm. So he's like, I'm just gonna go and just. Beat the brakes off. If he blows guy. him out, tell Fimo, you got to run it back. Because he he was not about running it back with him. Yeah. Like, at all. And Lomachenko seems like he's on a mission. And don't get me wrong. I always complain about this in boxing. Like, if I had a tough fight, run it back. I'm I'm never fighting you again. I'm going to be honest. Yeah. You I'm, go, I'm you out. Go, you go back. Hey, like, you and I are peace, boxing. Brother. I'm the same hey, way. Hey, like, hey peace, I, brother. I had a tough fight. Hey, hey, man. Hey, hey. Beat your old squad. I'm out. Yeah. You never getting this again. Yeah. I'll yeah. move up. Yeah. Done so. <laughs> I'll move up. Yeah. I'll move up or down. I'll be there. I'll yeah. move up. I ain't never fighting you again. I'm out. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I think. Yeah, Tiafimo. I, I don't know. With Lomachenko, like if Lomachenko, if he really handles Nakatani, he was by no yeah. means a slouch and a tall, rangy fighter. Mm-hmm. Lomachenko, not a very big guy for the weight. I'm going to throw some money on Nakatani. It's not, it's not a bad bet. Um, if he just, like, blows him out, like, you really got to look at TV. I'm like, uh, once you beat, if you beat Cambosis in August, you like, gotta maybe run you got to run this one back. Yeah. But, you know, Bob, uh, Bob, Bob, don't, Bob, Bob old school. He going to yeah. pressure that. Yeah. Bob going to pressure Well, he loves, and he loves Lomachenko. That's one of the yeah. few guys. Yeah, he, he likes in a way now. Yeah. For the moment, uh, um, in a couple years he'll hate him. But <laughs> yeah, I, I just watch track records. I just watch how things go. Hey, well, after we're done with this, I want to run yeah. somebody. But the uh, yeah, no, I think I think it's gonna be fun. I I just Lom Prime doing his doing his damn thing. Lomachenko is so fun to watch. Mm-hmm. He's still mm-hmm. special. And we didn't see that for most of that fight. And then when we saw it, I was like, oh yeah, here we go. And then you know he's he got the pivots. He's fighting off the angles. I was like, this is the guy I wanted to see the first. You know, yeah. ten rounds, yeah. but yeah, uh, yeah. So it'll be interesting to see if he can uh, kind of get back, get back to what we we saw with him before. How do you think that one goes? Uh, it's it's a tough fight for Lomachenko. I think Nakatani. He's he's long. He's rangy. He's fast. He got good boxing style. I mean, it's just that awkwardness. Hey, he stays moving. He got that. Yeah, it, it's yeah. A, it's it's um, it's like the Asian fighters have that. They fight like. It's not the same as English fighters. English fighters fight with the arm out. Yeah. Uh, Asians do it too, but their their hands are everywhere and they're and they're everywhere. So I think that he's gonna give an awkward look to Lomachenko. I do. I want Lomo to win. I expect Lomo to win, but it's how he wins. I think if he again, if we're talking about him really uh, making Nakatani look mm. like everything that I'm saying that he's not yeah. or not look like everything I'm saying he's right now. Then you gotta run it back if you if you Teofimo Lopez, you gotta kind of like you know it's kind of like hey, uh, you gotta you know reshoot that that rock you yeah. know and prove it. Are you, I'll pull a Carson Ant and say no, Peace. I'm good. We had Moving a, up, we had a good, we had yeah. good here for a good time, not a long time. Hey, uh, our boy, he went from fighting Earl Spence to Sean Porter to. I don't even know. They gave him three options. I was like, what is going on with Terrence Crawford? Oh. The three options to fight now is... I'm disgusted. Yeah. I'm disgusted. What? It's it's pretty bad. It, well, so the criticism, we've talked about it before. The criticism of Terrence Crawford, fair or unfair, I think it's fair, <laughs> is that he hasn't fought somebody that is an established top guy currently I got you. at I 147. Got you. I got you. Or, uh, not Kell Brooks shot. Yeah. Um, and you fight guys like that are just coming up from 40 or that have kind of been around. Jeff Warren is one where it's like, okay, like mm-hmm. more power to you. Mm-hmm. But um, so yeah, the three guys were pro Jeff grace, mm-hmm. Josh Taylor mm-hmm. and Zapata. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I remember you saying who, that, like yeah. didn't mm-hmm. even look good against our guy. Shout out to hard work, Hank <laughs> Lundy. Um, <laughs> but like, I just don't, I don't know. And I, you don't need to speak on from a friend angle. I don't know what Bud's mindset is right now. Cause there are guys we talk we just talked about Pacquiao and Donaire. Those guys are like, I want 
legacy fights. I want to beat these guys. If Bud's thinking that, that ain't it. Mm-hmm. None of those three guys. That ain't it. Mm-hmm. If he's just thinking, I'm a champion. I'll beat guys. They're put in front of me to get a decent little check. Keep showing that I'm a pound for pound fighter. Cool. Fight these guys. What's that? What's Where do you think he's at? Do you think he's kind of looking to challenge himself or not challenge? Because those guys are, I don't want to disrespect those guys. Those guys are challenges, but they're not established guys at 47. Mm-hmm. They're not the or top even five. Guy, or even guys at 47. Yeah, None not, of those three guys are at 47. They're yeah. all 40. I just, I got to wonder if his contract is in his way. And I'm, I'm speaking on that because yeah. I think me, Bob is a big I'm, I issue. didn't say Bob. Yeah. I said the contract. Uh, Anthony and Carson now we, <laughs> the Dudley boys. Now we yes, we know who 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 did the contract. We don't know da 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 da. Yeah. But I got a feeling that the contract is in the way of Bud doing what he wants to do. Um y'all haven't seen me in the ring because I really wanted to get the fight with Bud. Yeah. yeah. Y'all haven't seen me in the ring because for whatever reason I can't get that fight, whatever reason I couldn't get the Arrow Spence. I, I I'm not willing to get in the ring with Paid. I'm not willing to get in the ring with Pro Grace. No, no disrespect to any of those yeah. guys, but I'm looking at getting in the ring with the elite elite. You dare to be great. Because that's where I've been, yeah. and that's where I consider myself to be. And I'm no disrespect to any of those guys. Yeah. Josh Taylor just did his yeah, thing. Yeah, I mean, completely you know unified. I mean? Yeah. yeah. But I just got a feeling that, and I, I don't know his business, but I, that's just my feeling. My my hunch is that the business for but is in the way and to go further, not just the business of boxing where depending on what side of the street, but yeah. literally his contract I feel is in the way. So something a lot of people don't know. If I don't want to do what the contract says, you get put on the shelf. I know a lot of people have heard that that term, but yeah. you just booboo went through that for a long time. Yeah. It was like, I'm on the shelf, I'm on the shelf. I right, have nothing I can do. I'm gonna do it, you know. Yeah. And I just got a feeling that that's the situation that's going on with Bud. So another, but pick up the phone, boss. Yeah, I've been hitting you. Yeah, another. Also, another hey. funny thing to think of, real quick, for you. Sure. So Josh Taylor unified the division. They set all the belts. Then one of you boxing fans, tell me how does Barrios have a belt in that division? Oh, shit. Hey, hey, WBA, hey. slap yourself. Hey, 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 shit starter. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> F okay. If he moves, if he finally gets an elite fight. Yeah. With Sean Porter, Earl Spence, or Pacquiao. Pacquiao and Spence, possibly he could get knocked out. Yeah. Porter, he could lose 8 4. But he's not going to get knocked out. Porter, he could, he I'm possibly not. could get knocked out, but I'm saying most, most, most likely Sean. Why'd you dab me up? I don't know. Don't dab me up. No, that. no, no. Yeah. Well, I'm, supposed to leave I, me I'm just being real life. Yeah, yeah. Possibly Sean back out there. Yeah. Possibly Sean could knock him out. <laughs> Possibly Sean can knock him out, but yeah, most likely like Sean dominates yeah. 8-4. Sure. And this is just, I'm just saying, worst case scenario, fans, because yeah. definitely he can knock all three of those out. I understand he can dominate all those Go fights. back to the episode two, but you I'm know just, my prediction. Yeah, I'm just saying, what if he goes in those fights and that happens? Yeah. Is his whole career overrated? It's like all of it's a waste because you finally fought somebody and you lose once you fight the top five? I had a conversation with Tim Bradley. I don't know if I told y'all this. Um, when we were promoting... Uh, Wilder Fury 2 out here. Man, why don't you... Man, he need a dance partner. Why don't you get in the ring with, with, with Bud? I said, man, I... I, I, I want like, to. I like to fight with Bud. Yeah. I said, but I can't be the first guy that he fights at 147. I said, two things are going to happen. I said, if I beat him, everybody's going to say that he he wasn't who he is and I believe him to be who, who he is. Yeah. I said, if it's a tough fight for him, everybody's going to be saying that he's not on the level. Yeah. I said, I, I would rather him fight somebody else who's at the top at 147 first so that he can kind of solidify who he is and then I'll get in the ring with him. Champ, that ain't your job. Your job ain't, you. You. this is a business. You know how much I hate, you know how much I hate yeah. agreeing with Timothy Bradley, but I do in this he case. Said, he <laughs> said, yeah. you, th- th- that ain't your job. Yeah. He said, you can't be concerned about him and what he, you got to be concerned about yourself yeah. and you got to be concerned about what's best for your, for your career. Yeah. And he said, that fight with him is the best. I said, I agree. I said, I don't know if we'll get it, but just let, I'm letting you know that that's how I feel. I feel like I don't really want to be the first guy at 147 that he gets in the ring with that's that true 47 because I just feel like it'll be a bad mark on his career and people won't allow him to move beyond that. Yeah. And then he said, man, I, I hear what you're saying, but you got to go for that. Yeah. <laughs> I, was like, I was like, all right. And so, you know, too bad. I think I went at it the wrong way. You know, I've said publicly that, you know, we were going to fight, that we had a conversation, so on and so forth. And I think that, you know, I've said this now in multiple interviews that 
I kind of said some things publicly that probably I should have took to him instead. This is the public apology yeah. uh, of apologies because I've done it before, but I hit him up a few times just with the, hey, what's up? How you doing type thing? And I haven't heard back. So you hear this boss just reaching out to say what's up. And I would, I understand what you're saying from a friend's perspective, but yeah. also like, I understand going about but the friend way, but like, if you want the fight and it doesn't happen, yeah. then you're not, then it's not the friend way. Then it's a, hey, I'm a boxer, <laughs> you're a boxer. Yeah. It makes sense for both of us. Yeah. One guy, um, to go to Ant's point, I don't know if it like completely invalidates him. It it definitely is a huge mark on his career at 147. Or is he Mikey Garcia, Danny Garcia? What if he fought Danny Garcia? I don't give a damn. I don't think a lot of people would care about that fight. Yeah. No, that's actually probably the fight not. He but cares about or cared about, but I don't. I don't even know if he cares about yeah, that. No, uh, he could fight Danny Garcia and then fight Mikey two weeks later. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah. Dang it! I hate to say that yeah. about Mikey. I don't. I don't know. <laughs> if, I don't know if it's to that extent because he has. At least one, yeah. Um, thinking about this earlier, I'm cutting yeah, you off. Yeah, I feel like NUA is right now is where Mikey Garcia was for a long time, where he was just he was just running over cats and he was doing this thug fizzle. Not to say that he ain't who he is. I yeah. really do believe yeah, yeah. anyway to be who he is. But I had that thought earlier. Like once upon a time, we was looking at uh, Mikey Garcia hey, man, the same way we man, look man, at NUA. You now. just gotta go back to one thirty five. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I just. Yeah, I don't know. I, I think Bud, and not, not to turn it into the Terrence Crawford podcast, but yeah, I think he, he needs to win. I mean, it's if, if from a legacy perspective, from if I'm going on a put it on my boxing fan visor, he needs it. He otherwise, you're what have you really done at 147? Mm -hmm. I understand people say, oh, he beat Kel Brook, he beat Sean. Yeah, that wasn't the same Kel Brook that beat Sean. I assure you. Mm -hmm. um, I it, know. Yeah, it's just hey, he needs the win for legacy. I don't know if, like you said, if his contract's holding that up, if it's just he doesn't care enough to try to not fight the contract, but, like, there are ways you can get around certain things. Yeah. So if you want, yeah. we always talk about, like, fights, and, and Eddie Hearn says this. He's like, if somebody wants the fight, the fight will happen. Like, if Eddie Hearn's like, if a fighter comes to me and he says, hey, bump everybody else, I want to fight this guy, mm -hmm. he's like, the fight will happen. Mm -hmm. it, that's just how it works. Mm -hmm. I work for the fighter. Mm-hmm. And so I think if it got to the point where Bud was desperate and was like, I need a top guy at 47, whether it's you, mm -hmm. whether it's Errol, mm -hmm. whether it's Ugas, mm -hmm. any of those guys, mm -hmm. I think he, I think it would happen. Mm -hmm. I don't know. It has to be pushed from both sides, though. Sean can't Very push true. from his side, and he ain't pushing the same from his yeah. side. And that's mm -hmm. kind of why, like when, I met, like, when Sean said his whole piece about the friend angle, like, we tried that. You didn't show any interest. Mm-hmm. You you kind of floated interest. Like, yeah, because you didn't come out of the gate like, yo, nah, let's, nah, let's nah, fight right yeah, now. Because if and it, it felt like I'm going after Earl, I'm going after Manny. Yeah. Okay, those don't work out. I'm coming to get yeah. you, Sean. And, and I was like, okay. Yeah. yeah. And then it was like, uh. yeah. And then also yeah. in, into Bud, there was a little Twitter back and forth like, yo, well, I'm working on something. Well, clearly you're not because you still haven't fought. You still yeah, don't have a fight working, announcement. I wasn't working on so shit. it's like, yeah, you weren't work, really working on anything. Yeah. But hey, listen. Um, to the point of the contract. Maybe he's been working on that. Maybe. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. So maybe. Yeah. Hopefully. Um, I don't know. Listen, yeah, I, I want all to... like Bud too. So I mean I hope I hope he gets one of those. If fights. I say this, will we get in trouble for tampering? Uh oh. I don't, think, I don't think the NBA rules hey, work. Come on this side of the street, baby. Yeah. You get you some fights over here. Yeah, man. Hey. Plenty, plenty of wealth to wait hey, yeah, yeah. Hey, buy, hey, buy yourself out the contract. I got fifty dollars on you. I got ten dollars. <laughs> What were you gonna say? Uh, I, found, I felt like it was something more. I wanted. I, I wanted to touch on this right, right quick. Yeah. Because I had the conversation the other day. I was like, I can't talk about this now and not talk about it on the show. Okay. The press conference. Tyson Fury. Okay. Keontae Wilder three. Yeah. The press conference. Yeah. It was uneventful. <laughs> it was I thought really dry, especially on one side. Sean yeah. was looking it forward was, to this press was, conference. I was. Too. It was. Kind, it was entertaining on the other side, where yeah. where, where it could be and needed yeah. to be. Um, but overall, what are your impressions so far, <laughs> just from from the aspect of the way the, the angle that Deontay came into the press conference? So and, and, and you know, so for Deontay, it's a situation. I think Ant and I maybe talked about it. It's a damned if you do, damned if you don't. Because if he came out and said, even if it was just if he talked trash, if he came out and talked about the gloves in the first fight, if he talked about his water in the first fight, if he talked about any of that, then the narrative is people are going to rip him. Why are you bringing this up? Why are you still talking about this second fight? Why are you doing this? Why are you doing that? Okay. He goes in there and says, I'm not going to say anything. And now 
Well, you can't go to a press conference and not say anything. Well, what did you want him to say? Mm-hmm. It, we know Deontay Wilder is the a confident easy. guy. Yeah, yeah. He is who he is, so he's not yeah. going to go up there and, and be Sean Porter. Oh, you know, I look forward to this fight. Well, Don't do an impression of me ever. I wasn't, but I'm saying generally, okay. he's not going to go up there and just be like, <laughs> hey, you know, I think it's going to be a great fight. Thank you for coming out today. Yeah. This is not Deontay. And, yeah. that, and that, that's what we like about Deontay. That's yeah. what makes him exciting, other than the, you know, hammer from Alabama, like yeah. he says. But, um, no, I don't I don't have an issue. If, if from Deontay's perspective, if you are that locked in and that ready to fight, I'm down mm-hmm. on a million percent. Mm-hmm. And, and and also, you, you, you're you fighting a guy that blew the doors off of you. And can talk to talk. Anything you say, he yeah. quick with it. Yeah. He and he just blew the door off of you. Yeah. Hey man, let's just fight. I don't read into press conferences very often. I yeah. just feel like it's a part of the and it needs to be done. But for with further this context, being the third he one, also did interviews. Like he sat down with the SPN. He uh, sat down with other guys. He sat down with Ellie, barbershop conversations. He sat down with people. So it wasn't like he like showed up, was like here, and then sat there and then got on a private jet and got out of there. He did talk. So I mean I I get not reading into it, but like, I don't know what people wanted. Yeah. I, I feel like if I'm Deontay, I'm like, what really, what do you want me to say? Yeah, yeah. Just tell me what you want me to say. Yeah. Cause I'll go up there and say it. Cause yeah. if he went up there, like we said, and talked about whatever, people would have been roasting him. They've yeah. been killing him. Yeah. Goes up there and does it. And writers are like, yo, you have to go up there and talk and sell the fight. Do you really think, ask, let me ask you this as a, as a boxing fighter and as a fan, right? If Deontay mm-hmm. would have said something, did that make you more interested in buying the fight? Or were you buying the fight either way? Is there anyone on the fence about buying this fight? So so you said, and we already know this, yeah. Deontay Wilder is not going to do it the way I would do it. Right. I, would, I literally would have gone up there and said, hey, he got it the last one. I'm working hard. Yeah. I'm a different guy. I'm a different fighter. Yeah. Y'all are going to see July 24th. Buy this fight. Yeah. Because this is a fight you don't want to miss. He, he shined in the, in the second one. I'm gonna shine in the third. I yeah. would give people something to remember. He had a little, he had a little to, rhyme and want to, you know, see. Yeah. It was he had a little, yeah, rhyme. A little rhyme. He had a little rhyme. And, and honestly, we talk about <laughs> he that, had a little rhyme. That was good enough for me. Yeah, yeah. That was like, yeah. Because I just don't. I can speak from my own personal yeah. opinion. I don't. I'm not on the fence about this fight. Yeah. Like I'm excited for this fight. Yeah. yeah. I don't know if anyone's like, man, you know. Deontay Wilder went up there and didn't say anything. I, I don't think I'm interested. It's a press conference. Like, so that's why people, that argument to me yeah. was was boxing reporters are just reporters in their feelings yeah. that he didn't answer your questions. He yeah. didn't talk at a press conference, yeah. which is the typical thing to do. Like, No, people are not going to not buy the fight because Deontay didn't talk. You know, it's just stupid. We but, got we got some weeks to go. So we'll, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll get we'll into dive it. into and it. And poor Malik Scott, that, that poor guy had oh, to sit up there. Had to, he, yeah. had to, my God. <laughs> he had to sit there and just be the only guy. And yeah. the one the one criticism I have, the face off was uncomfortable. The, uh, yeah. It was unnecessary. Six minutes. It was uncomfortable. Yeah. yeah. I just I guess I don't you mentioned you don't read into press conferences. I don't read into face offs. Yeah. So I think the whole I know Fury mentioned a story about like being in a sauna with Klitschko and he was like, I'm not gonna get out of the sauna to I don't know. You're a fighter, so uh-huh. maybe that works. Uh-huh. But like, I don't know. If I'm Deontay Wilder or Fury, I'm not like. I don't he, know. He broke the glare first. The pre- at the stare down. He's definitely weird like that. I never Are you forget. No. No. No, 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 I probably no, used to be, but no, not no more. No, he's comp- He's very competitive for sure. Even though he's been not no more, not no more, major not no more. If we leave right now and go to California, are you gonna beat me? Yes. Okay. So That's <laughs> different though. <laughs> let me ask you. Let me ask. Let's close on this for the people that are wondering face offs and, and all that. As a fighter, do, do you read into that at all? Like at all? Listen, there's, Sean smiles. There's, I was gonna say, there's only been a handful of face-offs that I really read into him. First of all, Keith Thurman would all, always did this thing with his eyes. Yeah. Somebody said, oh, "Did he do the thing with the yeah, eyes?" Yeah, it's a, it's a little much. It's I, a little I, this is, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I got that's nothing for me. The yeah. one that got me was Errol Spence Jr. Okay, I I felt so good. Yeah. It was nothing for me to, to to face off with you, excuse me, face off with you and then smile. Yeah. Because I felt that good. Yeah. My smile's like not fake. You know yeah. what I mean? Same thing when I, when I fought Danny Garcia. I smiled. Like I just was feeling good. You yeah. know what I mean? So, but for the most part, the face offs are part of the process. I don't have, I don't have that type of animosity. And I think that's the thing is there's an animosity coming from D yeah. that he that that's right now this is the only time I can show you and and let you feel this animosity is what through a, my eyes. What about know? from the psychological aspect? Do you ever feel like, 
Oh, Keith Thurman looked away first. Like, does that factor into no, your No, no, but the Broner some guys, face off is the best. Some guys are on that. No, 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 no. The, some guys are on no, that. No, the, uh, no, Sean, the Andre Berger uh, face off. Sean just serious. When Sean didn't smile, oh, he got hot. Yeah, hey, hey, yeah, he's he, like, yeah. Sean's like, yeah. all right. And then Sean's, yeah, like, yeah. Yeah, the, the, yeah, Berto, just, or the Broner one was funny just because there was there. Oh, yeah. He and wasn't and even KP's behind you firing, uh, firing uh, the subliminals with your <laughs> classic and Mike Stafford. <laughs> God love Mike Stafford. Oh, Mike got in it too? No, he just like, he's just there. Mike's hey, got a big yeah. Hey, Sean and Mike was both the only mature ones. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was. That would have been funny is if you faced off with Mike and KP faced yeah, off uh, with, uh, with AB. No, they would have put hands on each other. Um, yeah, but I, I, I don't know. I just. <laughs> that would have choked me. Yeah. <laughs> he would have the Homer choke. Yeah, <laughs> he would, he would have Bart Simpson. No, no sure. doubt about it. <laughs> but yeah, I, I don't know. I just didn't. The, the face off, I was like, really? Like, this is just, this is a it was bit. It's, it's a bit much. Yeah. And, and I was like, actually surprised that, that Tyson stayed there as long as he did. Well, like, like I said, he was the one that like sat in a sauna and like risked passing out to yeah. Outlast Klitschko yeah. and, and they weren't even fighting. Uh -huh. He said that oh. was like, they were like, they in, weren't, no. I think they might've been in camp together uh -huh. and he was just like, they were in the same sauna and he just that, that cool wanted Brian to, shit, he just wanted to like make a note and uh -huh. was like, yeah, I'm going to stay on the sauna. All right, basketball, close. Who wins the title? Down the final I think four. we all want to see the Suns do it. At least I'm speaking for do him we? and I. Chris yeah. Paul. I need my man Chris Paul to get one. I don't know if I want to see the Suns They're do playing it. really well. That's the I, I think if I'm rooting for the Suns, it's for James Jones. Yeah. Cavs champion, executive yeah. of the year, champ. My man will uh, bring everything I back I did to not Cavs. believe that the Bucks had enough to get yeah. past yeah. the Nets. Yeah. So I, I, there were a couple, I feel like there the was Nets. There was a guy was, missing for the Nets. Yeah. That was okay, but, but there were but actually two. Yeah. And saying that, I didn't think they had enough to win the finals, but it's like, all right, maybe. I just felt like this is like the big three of Miami. The first year, they they were just not ready. Also, next year, they can let's be also mention that LeBron would have been crucified if he airballed a game winner like Kevin Durant did. But aside from the point, <laughs> um, I think if I had to pick a team right now, well, if LeBron would airball them three free throws, yeah, it's possible. Like Giannis, yeah, Giannis, yeah. I am I crazy to think it might be the Bucks? No, I don't not. think they got. Enough. I don't think it's gonna be the Hawks. I think the Hawks might be. I don't think, it's I think the Hawks might be. The they gonna give them hell confident. though. Yeah, for sure. They gonna Trey, give them and hell. Trey Young's Trey Young's a special dude. Yeah, yeah. he's a um, baby Steph. Yeah. Um, but I <laughs> baby baby Steph right <laughs> the Clippers Steph in the thirties Clippers yeah. Clippers I don't yeah. you, I don't think you have enough if, if Kawhi doesn't come back you got T Lou Play P highly underrated Play coach. P shout out to T Lou who's Play finally getting credit Play P didn't give him enough credit no there's no play <laughs> he got outscored in game he got not, outscored in game seven no by attention. who did he get uh, Terrence Mann did he outscore him in game seven hey, hey, but man. um no I, I I'll, I'll say the Bucks shout out to our guy Toby but also. That shot by Kevin Durant wasn't the greatest shot ever. That was a silly thing to say. I, I think it was Michael Jordan's. <laughs> no, it's Kyrie. Kyrie, the game seven. It's Michael of, Jordan. Of three. The game to win the title. Were you talking about when he pushed off Byron Russell? Uh, push off, whoosh off. Yeah. It went in. Yeah, true. <laughs> but no, nah, I think it was Kyrie. Push off. Push yeah, I, know, I was rolling with that. I was accepting it. But it's going to be, it, it, this is fun. We talked about it before, but I think the fact that none of these teams have won since the merger yeah. is fun. So yeah. I don't, I don't have any, if any of these teams win, I have no complaint. Yeah. But it'll be fun. Hey, shout out to Juneteenth. A black team will win. <laughs> Last thing on this, though. Is that, is that a white I feel team? like the, the Jazz is the white team. Well, the Jazz That I feel like team, it's yeah. just a bunch of... All right. Is this yeah, now or never for Chris Paul? What? Um, yeah, this is the best opportunity. Probably, Le yeah. LeBron's coming back. I got a feeling. This Kawhi's is coming back. Yeah, because... Steph you, and Clay's coming back. Yeah. And you ain't making a pass. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, I would agree. Yeah, this, yeah. Is, probably, this is probably his shot. He won't make it out the Western Conference. CP3. So you guys, you guys yeah. are both going oh, yeah. sides. Huh? Hey, you trying? You trying to go to get? No, I rolled the bucks. I rolled the bucks. You trying to go? Let's hit one. Dang, you know we gotta bring somebody know, else. Man. You know I don't be going nowhere. Oh, you be lying. <laughs> the mask up, baby. Yeah, no doubt. Uh, got to. Um, no, yeah, I, I'll go bucks, but it's gonna be fun. All right, fun to shout watch. out to Toby. You want to yeah. hit one? Maybe. I, I, I want to hit Let's one. Let's talk about this offline. Yeah. <laughs> hey, you, hey, if we go to a game, we'll take. No, I ain't gonna say <laughs> that. Gonna offer a fence. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was yeah, gonna yeah. say the, the third or fourth comment. Oh, were, da, 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 da. yeah. Hey, Ant, Ant, what's up, man? <laughs> yeah, and it was gonna be Ant. We love like y'all, but we don't love y'all that much. Yeah. Not yet. Well, not yet. Not yet. Uh, Start the music. Yeah, we got good fights, but that's yeah, it. this weekend's gonna be fun. Yeah. All right, there we go. Y'all have a great day. 
you can make it the portal way. Don't tell me you didn't enjoy what you saw because I know you did what you need to do now. Hit that subscribe button, hit the like, hit that notification button. Check us out every week, every Tuesday, something new for you right here on the Portal Way Podcast.